cultures never stay the same, you know, and they change when we interact with other people. And that's a beautiful thing. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, My name is Gina Perez, and I am a professor in the Department of Comparative American Studies at Oberlin College. I am a cultural anthropologist by training, and the work that I do, the research I do, um, focuses on Latino um, communities in the United States, um, as well as uh, work that I've done in Puerto Rico. I have conducted um, written books about um, Puerto Rican migration between Chicago and the island of Puerto Rico. I've been doing research um, now in Ohio and um, some of the work I've done has focused on Latinas and Latinos in the military and in military programs in high schools. And right now the work I'm doing focuses on what some people refer to as the new sanctuary movement um, and um, faith-based organizing among Latinos. So that's the work that I do. Very impressive. I'm so nice to meet you. And I'm Carol Parker and I live here at Wildwood Senior Center. And uh, so I'm just delighted to find out more about this because in the United States, you know, it's Day of the Dead. And uh, now we're gonna talk about the Mexican holiday and you are going to, you're the perfect one to do it, Gina. <laughs> Okay, uh, it is, see if I have this right, uh, Dia de los Muertos, is that right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you explain a little bit about this Mexican holiday that originated in Mexico um, and mm -hmm. as in the U.S. it is the Day of the Dead? Would you, you explain exactly what this is? Uh, sure, so Dia de los Muertos is um, an ancient tradition you know, or has its roots in ancient Mesoamerica. So not just Mexico, but also throughout um, Central America. And so it has its roots in indigenous um, um, cultures and practices that um, really where, where it's a moment of honoring the dead. And you might wanna think about it as a celebration of life and death as things that are connected, right? So, um, so these are things that you know, we see among the Aztec and the Maya and the Toltecs that, you know, who lived throughout um, Mexico and Mesoamerica. And it's a way to commemorate people's loved ones who have passed from this world to the next. And even though it has its roots in those ancient cultures with Spanish colonialism and the arrival of Roman Catholicism to the Americas, you see this blending of, um, of cultural practices to what we now know as the Day of the Dead. And so, you know, it occurs on, um, or it's celebrated, um, and it's typically associated with Mexico, but celebrated on November 1st and 2nd, um, which are also correspond to, in the Catholic Church, um, All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Um, so you see a lot of what we call syncretism, you know, the mixing of different kinds of religious practices for us to understand and to see what and celebrate what we know of today as the Day of the Dead. Well, Gina, what are the traditions uh, exactly? How is it celebrated? So it's- Ceremonies maybe. Yeah, so it's celebrated largely through um, a couple of different things. So one is, and probably the most visible are what they call um, ofrendas or these big, beautiful altars um, that are very um, um, colorful, they're very elaborate, and, um, and they are altars to, um, to honor um, people, our loved ones who have passed. And on those altars, there's usually four elements, um, something that represents um, the, um, um, wind, uh, water, um, earth, and fire. And so those, these altars are, 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 um, are or ofrendas, are built by family members to honor those who have passed. And so sometimes you'll have a photograph of the person who has passed um, 
and um, and again, they're celebrations. And so you'll have a picture of the person. You'll have beautiful, mar you know, bright, vibrant marigold flowers um, that are very um, common to see, and partly because of their vibrancy, but also their aroma that it's supposed to attract and uh, and please the, the the souls of the dead. Um, you always have water that is supposed to quench the thirst of the dead. And I think for me, one of the most beautiful parts of these um, of these altars is the symbolism of earth, which is which are the foods that people bring um, to these altars. And they'll bring things that the person really loved in life. You know, so if someone really loved mangoes or they loved bananas, I'm thinking of my father, right? That's what I would put on his altar, right? Um, you know, or um, but typically you also have what they call pan de muerto, which is a special we made um, sweet bread in Mexico. It's round, you know, like a skull, and it's filled with, it's topped with sugar. And, and those are also at the altar. And, but you also have candles, you know, that to represent fire and life and to help the souls find their ways to, um, to these altars. So, um, so those are some of the traditions. Um, in places like Mexico, you also have a lot of people going to the cemeteries. Um, That's what I was trying to know. What, yeah. what happens there? There's something very similar. People decorate um, the cemeteries and the graves of their loved ones with all of these things that I just explained. They'll bring these beautiful flowers. They'll bring what they call um, papel picado. You know, if you've seen in Mexican stores, um, really brightly colored pieces of paper that are cut out with different um, figurines. They they. They, um, they have those up hanging that may sway in the wind to represent you know, um, the wind and to have spirits coming through them. Um, and so they'll decorate the cemeteries um, with all of these things um, at everyone's grave. And it's a really festive occasion. Um, it's a moment to celebrate those people. Um, there often will be music played. Um, and it's a moment where people um, are very aware that there's a, there, there are connections between this life and the life beyond. Um, and so, so these are very vibrant celebrations, you know, throughout cemeteries in Mexico. And also, you know, we see this happening um, in places like Hollywood, for example, you know, one of the cemeteries in Hollywood is very famous for having these kinds of moments and celebrations too. Oh, I think this, what a celebration. What does this mean to you, this celebration, personally? So personally, um, so my family is from Puerto Rico and Day of the Dead is not something that we celebrate necessarily, um, you know, in the same way. Um, although, you know, um, all, spirit, all, all Saints Day and All Souls Day um, is something that as a Catholic, you know, I, I celebrate. But I grew up in California. So I, I feel very culturally Mexican. Um, and so I think for me, um, and I lived in Mexico for a year, I studied there for a year. And I was really drawn to the Day of the Dead celebration because it really does represent a recognition of continuity between life and death. And this idea that people who uh, may no longer physically be present with us are still with us in spirit. And how do we honor our ancestors and how do we remain connected to them even if they are no longer here? And so, um, you know, whenever I am able to on Day of the Dead, I try to get pan de muerto, you know, and bring it to my family. Um, you know, I know that my, um, you know, my father's um, grave in Stockton, California, we have, you know, little um, kind of bananas, uh, a little plastic banana figurines, because that's something that he really, he loved bananas in life. And um, so I feel like, you know, like a lot of Latinos were very, um, we, we borrow from a lot of different cultures. And so, um, and even though I'm Puerto Rican, my husband is, um, is, his parents are from Central America. So we have a very um, kind of mixed Latino cultural um, kind of household and traditions. And so, um, but I think trying to feel connected to, you know, grandparents, abuelas and abuelos who have, and, and siblings who have passed is something that's really special. And I, we try to be aware of on, on Day of the Dead. Now, this is so impressive and what a nice celebration. You know, does it compare like to a Mexican, would you say a Mexican Hall Halloween or is, is that a fair comparison? What, what do you think? You know, I would probably say no. And I think partly because I think 
Halloween is about my sense of Halloween is that yes. scariness yes. and horror and yeah. you know blood and you know and um and I mean and I think that there's you know something really fun about this whereas I think Day of the Dead is also fun but I think there isn't that element of horror and I think there is a more contemplative yes. sort of yes. approach and yes. thinking about our connectedness to other people to other people both in this world as well as people who are no longer physically present with us. So um, I know it because of the timing of it, I think people really like to, um, and to think about, you know, the ways that Halloween is also about death, but it's not kind of a death that is scary. Instead, I think Day of the Dead is about a death that's celebrated, a life that's celebrated. Yes, um, it, it's a happier occasion, I think. Now, like people, you, you were talking about your husband, it, it's okay for non-Mexicans to celebrate, but if so, what are the aspects that are okay or, or not okay for, for non-Mexicans to celebrate? Yeah, well, I'm a cultural anthropologist, so I, I think about how cultures change and cultural practices change. And I think that for me, the most important thing is, is that, you know, people try to learn about other cultures and try to understand yeah. like why people do certain things um, and, 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 and what the histories are behind those practices and to also recognize that, that cultures never stay the same, you know, and they change when we interact with other people. They, and that's a beautiful thing about culture. So, you know, absolutely, I think that, you know, um, there's so many, you know, Latinos are everywhere in the United States. Yes, in they Missouri. are. Yes. So I think one way to practice it is to go and participate, you know, as a respectful participant and, and to support different community efforts, because I think that Day of the Dead celebrations have become such a really important part of Latino communities in the United States. Um, and sometimes as a way to also mourn um, really painful things that are going on as well and to draw attention to them and, and to celebrate the passing of really beloved people. So for example, um, there was a very famous singer um, from um, Texas named Selena. I don't know, or oh, Selena. Yes. 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 So one of the, yeah, so Selena, and so she died, I guess, in 1994, tragic death. Um, but you'll also you'll find a lot of times that there will be these beautiful altars that are made to commemorate her because she was so important to kind of Latinos culturally, I think politically as well. So, you know, as someone who might not book be from that community to participate in kind of how a community is celebrating Day of the Dead is really important because that's the other thing is that Day of the Dead doesn't look the same, you know, in every place because it's all shaped by region, you know, by the place where you live. And so, you know, in Missouri, you know, I would encourage anyone um, to, to find, you know, where are the Latino communities that maybe have a museum exhibit or who have a celebration that or a parade or something that they're celebrating and to be a, um, a, re a respectful and active um, supporter and participant in that. Absolutely, um, they are. Tina, there was a movie, a Coco, and, and I, I was wondering if I, uh, maybe people have seen it, but I know that's not the only exposure, but it may be to some people, but uh, is, it, is it something to do with the holiday? I'm sure it is, the, Co the movie Coco. Yeah. So I, oh yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> My kids got <laughs> watching it with me. I just, I love it because I think it's it's so beautiful because I think it is sometimes for some people one of the first exposures they have That's to awesome. the Day of the Dead, and it's about this young boy's journey to feel connected to something that his family is telling him is important. And he's he's ambivalent and he doesn't know, but he also has these dreams and aspirations. And in the end, you know, part of those dreams and aspirations yes. are kind of supported by his 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 family history, right? And so, I think that's such a beautiful movie that talks about you know what does it mean to be remembered? What what is the, what do we lose when we forget? You know, yes. our dead and the, and the people who who have um, have preceded us and how important it is and what a challenge it can be 
to for young people to feel that connection and to honor those traditions. But also it's very hopeful because in the end he does. He, he does come to understand and love and appreciate, you know, yes. what you know what he's been given from his abuela and from his family. So I think it's a great movie. And it was also one that was really carefully um, researched. Um, they had a lot of Latino academics and artists and cultural workers who advised the movie. Um, the music was beautiful. I I can't say enough about enough good things good. about Coco. Good. I, I, I knew you you would definitely know about that. But is there anything else that you might want to add that we can know about this Mexican holiday that is throughout the world? Really, is there anything yeah. that you'd like for people? Yeah, I think that um, I just want people to know that it is, a, it is a celebration of life and a celebration that is very colorful, that sometimes can be, you know, when you look at all of the different skulls, like, you know, they have a lot of the, what they call calaveras, the skulls, and they're really brightly painted, um, that, that those are not morbid, that they're not about kind of a sadness and death, um, but that, that it really is about life and about Kind of recognizing our own fragility, but also recognizing that there's something beyond this, um, and 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 also to kind of recognize that there's not just one way to celebrate Day of the Dead. That it's very, um, you know, um, it changes. It's very vibrant, but it's also very dynamic. And depending on where you live, um, you know, you're going to, you know, your Day of the Dead celebration is going to look differently. Um, but that it also, you know, these are ancient traditions you know, through from Mesoamerica, but also kind of confused with you know, Roman Catholicism as well. And so to me, it's just really beautiful celebration um, that we see both here in the United States and as well as in the Americas. Okay, Gina, I know you celebrated a year in Mexico. And tell me, how did you celebrate like November the 1st there? So um, that is a great question. I haven't talked about this probably in 20, 30 years, but so when I, um, I was living in Mexico City and, um, and everyone said that for Day of the Dead where you needed to go was this small town of Pátzcuaro, P-A-T-Z-A-C-U-R-O, I think it is, but Pátzcuaro, <laughs> um, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the state of Michoacán, because they said Pátzcuaro was the place where Day of the Dead celebrations were just amazing. So, um, and I was lucky, I, you know, I got on a bus with a bunch of my friends and went from Mexico City to, um, to, um, to Michoacan and was in Pátzcuaro and Hanitzio for um, Day of the Dead celebration. And I, maybe that's, you know, that's a good question, Carol, because maybe that's where I really started to appreciate Day of the Dead because to see people in the cemetery at midnight and it, candles and to have people celebrating, but also in a solemn way, um, but not in a bad way, it really made an impression on me, you know, and to, and actually people um, were sleeping in the cemetery that night um, at the graves of their loved ones, um, and it felt very safe. And so to be able to see that and to be there in Pátzcuaro, in the town of Pátzcuaro, um, was really, really beautiful. And it was something that, you know, I had never really heard of until I was studying in Mexico City and was taking these classes and kind of talking to people. Um, but that sort of was the quintessential kind of place to go uh, for Day of the Dead. And it was, they also had dances. They have very famous dances, um, you know, um, La Danza de los, de los Ancianos or de los Viejitos. And they have like a dance um, de los tec Tecuanes you know, it's where people like wear the, these um, these masks of old people and these dances, and they did those in the streets of Pátzcuaro and Hanitzio. It was really, really beautiful. That was a perfect time for you to be there, wasn't it? Definitely. It was. It was, it was really, it really just changed my, my life. Like that was really just an, a way of thinking about death that I hadn't thought about before. Oh, I'm so glad that to, to learn about this. Right. So I was born in New York, like most, like a lot of Puerto Ricans. My, my family, um, you know, my dad was born in Puerto Rico and, and was raised in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, my mother was raised in Puerto Rico and they met in New York. I was born in New York, moved to California as a young girl. And, um, and that's where I was, I was raised. And, um, and then went away to college 
um, went to graduate school, um, you know, and um, went to different places. I was in New York City for a while and then came to Ohio 18 years ago when my husband and I both got jobs here at Oberlin College. So Ohio is your home now. It is our home. It is our home. We've lived here for 18 years, We've raised three children. We're still raising one. Oh, I guess you never stop raising kids, right? No. <laughs> so we have three kids um, who we've raised here for the last 18 years and it's it's home. It's, and it's and and I think a lot like Missouri and a lot of the Midwest, people don't think about, um, except for maybe Chicago, you don't think about the Midwest as a place where Latinos live. Um, and that they've lived here for a long time. And so I do a lot of work with um, Latino communities in Northeast Ohio to help um, kind of raise the profile that we have a long history in Northeast Ohio. We just, um, we're working on it. We just have an exhibit for Latino Heritage Month actually about a hundred years of Latinos in this one town of Lorain, Ohio, where I've been working. And so, um, so Latinos have been around all over the United States for a very, very long time. And I'm really glad to be here because also in Northeast Ohio, it's, um, it's Mexican and Puerto Rican. Um, and that to me is really important to be a part of that community, so. Okay, Gina, you said you had three children. Now, do they celebrate with you also? How do they celebrate your children? You know, we don't necessarily celebrate it formally. Um, I think one of the things that we, I try to do with a lot of celebrations is, um, is share food, you know? So I try to make it to, um, you know, the Mexican grocery store to get pan de muerto. Um, you know, we have little, um, you know, calavera skulls around the house. It's not a big celebration in our house, um, but it's something that they know about. And it's, and I think that there are ways that kind of the elements of Day of the Dead are ones that we try to um, incorporate, you know, to be mindful of, you know, our ancestors who have passed on that day. So maybe we'll talk about that at dinner. Um, you know, we have their pictures around the house. Um, so trying to be intentional that way, but, um, but it isn't something that we um, celebrate in a, um, in, a, in a really significant way, unfortunately. So I guess like, again, I think taking the principles of Day of the Dead, um, I'll give an example. My, um, my husband's brother passed away actually 10 years ago. And one of the things that I like to do on the anniversary of his death, actually, which is in the fall, not too far away from Day of the Dead, is um, especially in the early years, after, before, right, right after he passed, is he would get pizza and Coke, you know, because he loved pizza and he loved to drink Coke. So like kind of being intentional about what what reminds us of that person and what brought that person joy and what brought us joy together um i gave the example too of thinking about my my dad you know um you know when he passed and kind of how um you know on his grave there are these plastic bananas that are on the outside um so thinking about him and so you know we'll talk about the things that um are meaningful to those people um, this will be the first year um the first day of the dead where we will be without my mother-in-law, my husband's mother. And I've been thinking about her a lot, you know, um, about, you know, some, some photographs around the house and, and trying to think about, you know, what is a way to, to honor her um, on this day. And she was a really fun lady. I mean, this is a woman who, she, if, if she could dance and laugh and just have a good time, then things were good. And so I want to make sure that there's something that we do on that day that really kind of honors that spirit of, of her. Um, so, so I think we do it in, 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 in those intentional ways. Like what are, what are the things that we remember about that person that we loved about that person and that we would know that person would want us to remember them by or is what I mean by intentional. Dina, you know, that's meaningful to me also. It's what you're saying. I think to anyone that here that seeing this, it's meaningful. I was so close to my mother and, and I do 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 some traditional things that she loved. I do, and I would make I would make the dessert uh, for my children that she loved. And she always made banana bread. And this is a funny thing she she always kind of burned it a little bit, and they loved it. All my family loved it. Loved it. Well, I started after she passed away. I made it, and they said, "You're not making it like my grandmother did." 
you need to burn it a little bit more. <laughs> but that was a funny thing. But the tradition, the banana bread and her chocolate chip cookies. Yes, yes, I carried that tradition, the food. And I, I do have a meaningful remember of her too on the cookie. Beautiful, Carol. That's beautiful, Carol. So that so then if you were to make an altar for her or if you were to do create a space, you know, you would have banana bread and chocolate chip cookies there, you know. That's right. um, it, that's right. it's a picture of her and you know, and that's a way of keeping her spirit alive and, and keeping you all connected to her, um, which is I think part of what that Day of the Dead celebration is all, of, all about. It's a celebration of that life, right? That's right. And you know, she played the piano beautifully and had a piano. And my son, who, who moved to Nashville and has a big house for it, he took the piano and that's a symbol of her. When I go there, I get to play the piano. Some of that um, music she had. So there are a lot of meaningful things. I And I hadn't even thought about this, Gina. All these things have been meaningful to me. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that, Carol. That is very meaningful. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hadn't even thought of it. Gina, what about the masks that you see that people wear? And, and face so, painting. Yeah, so sometimes they're masks and sometimes people paint, paint their faces and they paint their faces um, like skeletons, what they call in Spanish calaveras. Um, and those calaveras are very, can be very colorful. Um, and, and what's really interesting about the calaveras is that there is a long history in Mexico of, um, there was a, um, a painter um, or a, um, an artist named Jose Guadalupe Posada who was an artist in the mid, um, basically the mid 1800s to the early 1900s. So mid 19th century, early 20th century. And he used calaveras, like he, he would draw these incredible kind of skeletons and calaveras as a way to critique, you know, elite and upper-class Mexican society. And so there's a hit, there's a tradition in Mexico to use calaveras also as a way to have a political critique, um, and um, so so and so, one of the most famous kind of you know paintings that you know you, you see or come around on Day of the Dead is um, La Catrina. You know La Catrina. She's the the, the female um, calaveras or skull, and she wears a large hat. Um, th those are very very popular. So that comes from Posada's um, drawings, and, and 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 so it's a way. It was a way for him to critique. Um, you know, politicians and to satirize kind of upper class Mexican um, elites in society, but it's also become part of, you know, cultural traditions of, um, of both kind of poking fun at people. So one of the other things is our calaveras are, and the painting of the faces, um, these calaveras can also be poems that people write um, about, you know, to kind of make fun of people and to, you know, and to, and to satirize and to kind of poke, um, to, you know, kind of, yeah, kind of poke, poke fun at people. And so they'll come, people will come up with these really funny poems or calaveras oh. as well. Um, but the face painting is, is, part of that, is, is part of that tradition. What about the costumes? I know they, they sometimes wear colorful costumes. Is that true? Exactly. And so even um, in these um, paintings, in these drawings by, um, and also Diego Rivera and a lot of them will use, you'll see sometimes you know, these calaveras who are dressed in these ornate costumes. And again, that can be a critique of kind of the excesses of the rich and of the wealthy and of the elites in Mexico, um, because in the end, we're all just calaveras. You know, we're all the same body, even if some people can adorn themselves because they are of means um, in ways that other people can't. So there's a lot of really interesting things that are going on with those costumes. It's both a way to celebrate but also come out of history of critique and of social um, commentary of kind of these class divisions in Mexico. So I think that what, what's really interesting about Day of the Dead is that it's, it's, um, it has something it can offer kind of non-Latino American culture and how we think about kind of life and death. Because I think that in some ways, in the United States, you know, kind of in mainstream society, there's such a value placed on youth and placed on looking young and being young 
and um, and we're really distant from death. Like you know, we we and as I said before, I you know even before going to Mexico City and going for that Day of the Dead celebration, I'd never spent time in a cemetery. Like cemetery, I think that there's a way in American culture, and I think this is part of what Halloween is, is that you want to stay away from those things. That those things are scary. Those things are forbidden. Um, they're they're haunting. They're evil. You know that there's a, you know there, there's a, a forebodingness to it, and I think that this is where you know, um, non-Latino American culture has a lot to learn from Latinos in Latin America to, to, to embrace, you know, death as part of life. And, um, and that these are things that are um, inevitable, but they're also really beautiful. Um, and that we should not fear them, but actually embrace them. And, um, and I think that American culture is very much about trying to distance ourselves from death to prolong life um, in a way that might not necessarily always be good for us. And to, um, and I think that there's a lot to learn from Latin American and Latino cultures where we see this as a continuity and, um, and something to be embraced. I certainly have learned a lot, Gina, definitely. I think that, you know, for anyone who's really interested and maybe who is not, um, you know, near a community or can't get um, outside to see these things. There's a lot of resources online, and they have beautiful photographs at the Smithsonian, um, at the Smithsonian Museum and the Smithsonian Latino um, Virtual Museum um, for people to look at. And they have little videos, and they're so beautiful. And so, you know, not everyone can go can leave their homes, especially in a global pandemic, um, and you know, or if they're just not healthy or able to get around. So I really encourage you to look at some of these videos online. They're educational. They're really beautiful. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, I would really encourage people to to do those. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's something that I would include. I would like to see that. So that's yeah. good. I'm glad you and gave the videos, that videos are really short and um, and very informative. You've certainly been informative, <laughs> and I've loved this interview with you. Well, I, I'm very honored that you interviewed me. This has been really fun. And I think to myself, what a